Dear students, today we are going to perform an experiment which is based on simple pendulum. So what is the aim of this experiment? Using a simple pendulum, plot its L versus T square graph and to use it to find the effective length of seconds pendulum. So first of all, we should know that what is the meaning of seconds pendulum? It is a pendulum whose time period is just 2 seconds. If the time period of a pendulum is 2 seconds, it is known as seconds pendulum. So we are going to find the effective length of a seconds pendulum whose time period is 2 seconds. So what is effective length? So if you see the diagram, you can see that pendulum is hanged by thread and there is a hook. So effective length is basically the distance between the suspension point to the center of gravity of this bob or of this pendulum. So the total length, the distance between the point of suspension or the pivot point to the center of gravity of this pendulum is called effective length. So we are using a simple pendulum and we will be plotting this L versus T square graph and we will be finding the effective length of a pendulum whose time period is just 2 seconds. So this is the theory. The time period of a simple pendulum, we know that t equals to 2 pi root under L by g, where L is the effective length of the pendulum and g is the acceleration due to gravity. So in this experiment, we will be assuming the acceleration due to gravity g as 9.8. And our main intention is to measure the time period, we will be varying the length and we will be measuring the time period for each length and we will be plotting a graph between t square and l. And from that graph, we will be finding the effective length of a pendulum whose time period is 2 seconds. The apparatus required to perform the experiment is a simple pendulum. So you can see this is a simple pendulum, spherical bob and there is a hook. And this is a stand where we can hang the pendulum with the help of a thread and we can vary the length of this thread. To perform the experiment, first of all, we have to measure the mean radius of this pendulum. So mean radius of this pendulum can be measured with the help of vernier calipers. So with the help of vernier calipers, we can measure the mean radius of this pendulum as well as we have to measure the length of this hook, this hook. So we have to measure the length of the hook also, the mean radius of this pendulum and finally we have to measure the time period of the pendulum. Time period means time to complete one pleat oscillation, one oscillation. So one oscillation means if pendulum start oscillating from this point, this is the mean position or equilibrium position of the pendulum and if I displace the pendulum by small amount and if I release it, it start oscillating. So what is the meaning of one complete oscillation? If the pendulum start oscillating from this point, it goes to the other end and again come back to the same point. When it again come back to the same point, the time is called time period. So time period is the time required to complete one oscillation. So how to measure the time period? Time period can be measured with with the help of this stopwatch. So if you look at it carefully, this stopwatch, this is the start button and this is the stop, stop button. And at the same time, this is the reset button. So first of all, you, if you see carefully the stopwatch, there are 30 divisions which are marked with the black color and 31, 32, 33 are marked with the red colors. And there is a very small scale which is used to measure the time in minute. So first of all, we have to measure the least count of this stopwatch. If you see carefully, between any one second, 10 small lines are marked. 10 small lines are marked between any one second. That means the least count of this stopwatch is 1 by 10 second and it is 0.1 second. As I have told you, our main intention is to measure the effective length. So first of all, you have to understand what is the meaning of effective length. So length of the simple pendulum, that is the effective, effective length of the simple pendulum is equal to length of the thread plus length of the hook. So I have already shown you, this is the hook by which the pendulum is hanged and the mean radius of the bob. So here I have already written that L is equal to effective length, which is L prime. L prime is the length of the thread h is the length of the hook and r is the mean 
radius of the bob. These are the observation tables which are required to measure the effective length of second pendulum. So, first observation table is used to measure the mean radius of spherical bob. So, with the help of vernier calipers, we will be calculating the diameter of the mean diameter of this spherical bob and diameter by 2 is the mean radius. So, first of all you have to calculate the mean radius of spherical bob and thereafter this is the observation table which is very important observation table which is required to find the effective length of the second pendulum. So, in this case we will be varying the length of the pendulum this is the effective length effective length is L prime plus H plus R L prime is the length of the thread H is the length of the hook which I have already explained to you and R is the mean radius of the pendulum. So, we have to vary the length let us say 100 centimeter to 40 centimeter in the interval of 10 centimeter and in each case for each length we will be finding the time for 20 oscillation. So, we have to calculate we have, will be measuring the time for 20 oscillation for 3 times for better accuracy we will be measuring the time for 20 oscillation for 3 times and we have to take the average time to perform 20 oscillation. This is the average time to perform 20 oscillation and thereafter we will be calculating time period. What is time period? Time period is the time to required to complete one oscillation. So, total time divided by 20 will give you the time period and thereafter we have to take the square of it. After taking the square of the time period, we have to plot a graph. On that graph, we have to plot time square along the y axis and this effective length along the x axis. With the help of this graph, we will be calculating the time, the effective length of seconds pendulum. So, first of all we have to measure the diameter of this spherical bob. So, we have to place the spherical bob in between two jaws of this vernier calipers and we have to take the reading from this scale. So, as you know this is the main scale and this one is the vernier scale. So, this apparatus contains two scales. So, we will be getting two readings one from the main scale another from the vernier scale. In the main scale the vernier 0 touches exactly at 2.4 and this vernier 0 exactly coincides with the main scale reading. That means, the main scale reading is 2.4 and vernier reading is 0. So, the mean the diameter of the spherical bob is 2.4 centimeter as the vernier reading is 0. So, there is no contribution from the vernier scale. So, 2.4 centimeter is the diameter of this spherical bob. So, so, for better accuracy we can take multiple readings 3 or 4 readings to get average diameter and diameter by 2 will be getting the mean radius of the spherical bob. Afterwards we have to measure the length of this hook which I have already measured it is 2 centimeter. So, the length of the hook is 2 centimeter and the radius of this bob which has to be measured I have just I have taken only one reading. So, we have to take multiple readings to get better accuracy and after that we have to perform the main experiment. In the main experiment what you have to do we have to hang the pendulum with the help of a thread and we can vary the length of this thread. So, here we have to measure the length of the thread from the pivot point or from the point of suspension and here you can see the length of the thread is coming 46 centimeter. So, length of this thread is 46 centimeter. I have already measured the average radius of this uh, bob which is 2.4 centimeter was the diameter. So, 1.2 centimeter is the radius and the length of this hook which I have already measured it is 2 centimeter. So, now to perform the experiment we have to give a very small oscillation to it and every time we have to measure time for 20 oscillation. So, this is a bob. Now, we have to stop the oscillation in it and we have to give very small displacement to it not more than 5 centimeter because this formula the formula which I have already shown to you this formula is valid for small angle approximation. So, the angle should not exit more than 5 degree. So, here I can displace it not more than 5 centimeter and once I release it I have to measure the time with the help of the stopwatch. So, we have to take the reading of the time 
as well as we have to count the number of oscillation. So, once I release it, I have already given very small displacement to it. Once I release it, I will be start the stopwatch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So, here you can see the time taken to complete 20 oscillation is basically 28, 26, 27, 27.5 second. So, time taken to perform 20 oscillation is 27.5 second. Now, we have to repeat the same experiment, same procedure for two more times. Each time we have to take the time for 20 oscillation for better accuracy and afterwards we can vary the length. We can vary the length and we have to take the time for the different lengths and afterwards we have to plot L versus T square graph and from the graph we will be finding the effective length of seconds pendulum. So, this is the observation tables which are required to determine the effective length of seconds pendulum. So, first table is used to measure the mean radius of the spherical bob. So, here I have already shown you that we have measured the diameter of the spherical bob, main scale reading was 2.4 centimeter, vernier scale reading was 0. So, total reading is 2.40 centimeter that means there is no contribution from the vernier scale reading as vernier 0 coincides with the main scale reading and radius is basically diameter by 2. So, it is 1.20 centimeter. This is the second table which is the most essential table which is required to determine the effective length of the seconds pendulum. So, here this is the length of the thread which is fixed at 46 centimeter and this is the effective length which is 46 is the length of the thread, 2 centimeter is the length of the hook and 1.2 centimeter is the basically the mean radius of the spherical bob. So, total is 49.2 centimeter. So, this is the time for 20 oscillation. We have performed the same thing for 3 times. So, we have got 28.5 second, 29 second and 28.8 second. The average is 28.76 second, but we have to consider 28.7 second because the limit of accuracy is 0.1 second. So, time period is coming 1.4 second that is total time divided by 20 and this is a t square which is 1.96 second. Now, we have to vary the length and every time we have to take the time for 20 oscillation and we are measuring mean time period and after squaring we have to plot a graph between t square and l where t square can be plotted along y axis and length can be plotted along x axis. If you concentrate on this equation, you can see this 4 pi square by g is, g is basically a constant quantity. So, when we plot the graph between t square and l, it will be a straight line. So, here I have already plotted the graph. These are the different arbitrary points which I have taken. This point should be taken from the experimental table which I have already shown to you. And the main purpose of this experiment to determine the effective length of seconds pendulum, I have already told you seconds pendulum is a pendulum whose time period is 2 second. So, if you take the square of the time period, it will be 4 second square. So, in the graph we have to mark 4 and we have to draw two perpendicular line, one from this axis, another from this axis. So, this line will intersect the x axis that is the length axis at 100 centimeter. So, the effective length of the seconds pendulum is 100 centimeter.